of John at chapter number three. As we continue in John chapter three, verse number 16, I want to talk about the Bible in a nutshell. Last Sunday, we looked at the words for God. This morning, I want to look at that word so loved. Thank you. You may be seated. For God so loved. For God answers the questions of atheism because the atheists are complaining that we Christians have all the good days. We have Easter and Christmas. I suggest that if the atheists want a day, April Fool's Day would be a good day. Because the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But that word so loved answers the questions of fatalism which portend that we do not have a loving God. God is capricious if he's there at all, according to the agnostics. If he's there at all, he does not really care about us. He's just this grand watchmaker who made the heavens and the earth and just walked off and left it to run on its own. But John's gospel tells us that God so loved. First John chapter 4 verse 8 says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Indeed, a love that originates in the heart of God has a magnificent drawing power. So what is this, this love, what is this takeaway from the opening phrase of John 3.16, for God so loved? It means, brothers and sisters, that there is someone who loves you. Not just anyone, but the God of the universe is in love with you. For God so loved. Let's spend a little time with the adverb, so. God so loved. This is a qualitative and a quantitative adverb. So love, which indicates that it is a demonstrative adverb. Thus, the word could be translated, God loves you in this manner. Thayer's lexicon uh, calls this adverb an adverb of degree. Uh, so love. Uh, to, to love in such an infinite degree. Uh, in such a glorious manner. God loves you in this manner. In a manner that is beyond comprehension. The word so emphasizes the intensity or the greatness of the love of God. God's love, Lily Grove, is not like a leaky faucet. It's like an overflowing river. It is not like a trickling stream. It is like a bottomless ocean. It is not like a flickering light. It is like a blinding sun. I understand this from people who do this for a living, that the worst kind of blackout is a rolling blackout. Not a blackout that is caused by bad weather, but, but a rolling blackout. That, a rolling blackout comes from system instability. In the, in the electrical power grid, 
uh, generators send or transmit power to power lines. And the power lines that are connected to our houses sends power from the generator transmitted, transmitted by the power lines to our houses to give us electricity. And when there is a system instability, I have to turn off my lights in order for you to have lights. And then you have to turn off and turn your lights for somebody else to have lights. That's a system instability that causes a rolling blackout. But with God and the love of God, there is no system instability because the generator will never run out. And so the lines that transmit power to my house from God's house will never suffer a system instability. And so as Christians, we will never experience a rolling blackout because for God to love me does not mean he has to stop loving you. For God to bless me does not mean he has to stop blessing you. For God to make a way for me does not mean that he has to shut off making a way for you. God's generator will never suffer a system instability. We are God's children. And he knows each of us by name. He loves each of us as if we are the only ones to be loved. If you were the last person on earth, God would have sent Jesus to die just for you. We use the word love in so many different ways. Uh, I love smothered chicken. No, no, really, I love smothered chicken. Uh, I love mustard greens and cornbread. You love your car. You love your wife. You love your house. You love your job. We use love in so many different ways. But there are only three main Greek words for love. One is the word eros, from which we get our English word erotic. Uh, this is a, a, a love or word that describes a love that only takes. Erotic love only takes. It is a sensual love that only takes. Uh, another word is phileo, from which we get our English word Philadelphia, or the city of brotherly love. It, it conveys the idea of a friendship or a brotherly love. It describes a reciprocal give and take kind of love. Uh, unlike sensual erotic love, Phileo of Philadelphia is a social love between friends. But the word used in John 3.16 is the word agape, which indicates a love to the highest degree. It is a love that desires to give based on the character of the one loving, not upon the worthiness of of the one who is being loved. God loves us not because we deserve it, but because God is love. I wish I had a witness here. God is in love with us not because we are worthy of that love. God just loves us because that's who he is. It's not a sensual or a social love. It's a spiritual love. Let me move into my homework. I, I got a little technical with this to get you to, to see where I'm trying to go. Uh, the verb translated love, uh, agapeo, is a first aorist indicative active verb. First aorist indicative active verb. Uh, it is in the aorist tense, uh, the indicative mood and the active voice. Greek scholars say uh, it is a constantive aorist. A constantive aorist, brothers and sisters, is not like um, 
an ingressive heiress. Uh, an ingressive heiress indicates that there was a time when God began to love us. Uh, uh, this, this other heiress is not like a cumulative heiress which indicates that there was a time or there will be a time when God can perhaps stop loving us. But a constantive heiress is different from an ingressive and a cumulative heiress for there was never a time when God started to love us. And there will never be a time when God will end loving us. God has always loved us before we were even born. Somebody ought to help me preach it. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse number 3 helps us here to get a glimpse of this love of God because it says, Yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love. An everlasting love means a love that is beyond vanishing point. There's nothing I will ever do to stop God from loving me. In other words, brothers and sisters, it extends into eternity past and it reaches into eternity future. Augustine says, God loves each one of us as though we are the only ones to love. The greatest portrait of the love of God, Lily Grove, is found in 1 Corinthians at chapter 13, verses 4 through verse number 8. The context of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 must be looked at in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Chapter 12 is talking about spiritual gifts, about speaking in tongues, Oh, it's talking about the gift of prophecy. It's talking about a whole lot of spiritual gifts. And God has gifted the church and individual members of the church with spiritual gifts. But that's not what we ought to covet. We ought not to covet spiritual gifts. Because you have a tendency, if you are gifted, to lord your gift over somebody else's gift. I wish I had somebody to help me preach. If you can sing better than somebody else, you can put yourself over them. Or if you can teach better than somebody else, you can put yourself over them. Or if you preach better than somebody else, you can lord that over them. But we ought not to covet spiritual gifts. Chapter 12, verse 31 says, but I show you a more excellent way. And the more excellent way starts with verse 1 of chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not charity or love in action, it profits me nothing. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, love in action, it profits me nothing. Love, the scripture tells us what love really is. The greatest portrait of that love is not your spiritual giftedness. Brothers and sisters, in these verses, Paul shows us that the many sides of the true love of God is like a brilliant diamond that is held up before us so that we can see God in many facets. As Paul lifts up this love ethic, uh, the person of God is revealed in each and every gleam of light from how Paul describes what love is really like. Love is not primarily an emotion. Because emotions change. See how quiet you got right there? Uh, somebody you was in love with 20 years ago. You can't stand right now. On your wedding day, you loved each other so much, you could have eaten each other up. 20 years later, 
You wish you had have beaten somebody up. You sign your high school yearbook, yours forever. And you went back to your class reunion and said, thank you, Jesus. Because emotions change. But love is a volitional surrender of your will. It's not primarily emotion because emotion changes. Love is an act of your will. Paul tells us what love is. He says in verses 4 through verse number 8, he says, love is long-suffering. I wish I had two or three Bible readers. The word long-suffering means patient endurance under provocation. Patient endurance under provocation. They lying on you, but you still love them. They don't care about your best interests, but you still love them. To be long-suffering means to be long-tempered, as opposed to short-tempered. Amen. There's a whole lot of short-tempered people who go to church. You have a short fuse. It doesn't take much to ignite your temper. Just a little spark will get you all out of your shoes mad. Because you're short tempered. You're so short tempered you can't wait for the light to change at the traffic light. You don't even stop for the stop sign you're so short tempered. Somebody sitting in your seat at church, you'll stand right there and look at them. And they know that they better hurry up and find another seat because you are so short-tempered. I wish I had somebody to help me preach. But when you love, you love with a long-suffering kind of love that does not have a short fuse. Abraham Lincoln, 16th president of these United States, had an enemy, a mortal enemy, who despised him in his election campaign, a man by the name of Edwin Stanton. Stanton called Abraham Lincoln all kinds of names. He talked about how ugly he was. He said, you don't have to go to Africa to see a gorilla. You could go to Springfield, Illinois, and see a gorilla by the name of Abraham Lincoln. He's the ugliest man alive. He said, Lincoln is not only ugly, he's two-faced. And Lincoln, who was long-suffering, said, if I had two faces, you think I'd have this one? <laughs> Somebody gonna get that on the way home. But Abraham Lincoln was so long-suffering that when he became president, he made Edwin Stanton his secretary of war. And persons who knew how much Stanton had criticized and hated Lincoln asked him, why did he make him secretary of war after Stanton talked about him so bad and hated him so much? Lincoln said, because he was the best man for the job. When you're long-suffering, when you know how to keep you cool, when you're not short-tempered, you don't care who gets the credit just so the job gets done. And Lily Grove, we could get twice as much done if we stop worrying about who got the credit. What does it matter who the president is just so mission gets accomplished? What does it matter who leads the song just so God gets the glory? What does it matter who's in front just so the kingdom is expanding? Love is long suffering. And then love is kind. 
To be kind is to have active goodness that goes forth on behalf of others even when they can't be good to you. Just be kind. Oh. Smile sometimes. Be warm every once in a while. I mean, I know everybody has a bad day, but you can't sleep with your fist balled up every day. You can't have a chip on your shoulder every day. You can't be mad every day. You can't want to fight every Sunday. Sometimes you just need to express, most of the times you need to express kindness. Kindness. It's a warmth that radiates from your person because when you love and you have the love of God, he puts something in your face, something in your demeanor, something in your personality that people who are downtrodden, people who are wounded and broken, find their way to you because they know they will find somebody who is kind. Love is patient. That word long-suffering means patient. Love is kind. Here it is. Love is not envious. Mm. Godly love is pleased when somebody else does well. Mm. Godly love celebrates when somebody else has a significant accomplishment. Godly love claps for you when you leading the song. When you pray in the prayer. When you preaching the sermon. When you are teaching the lesson. I don't have to be out front to celebrate you. Because love, when it is real, is not envious. I've said to us over and over, you got to check people who are envious of you because they are far more dangerous than people who are jealous of you. Because jealousy is a benign, innocuous kind of form of flattery. When folk are jealous of you, they try to style their hair like you style your hair. They try to walk like you and and talk like, act like you. That's, that's, that's benign. You can, you can deal with that because that's just, that's just really, they appreciate you. They admire you. They just won't come up to you and tell you, but they really admire you because they, they won't ask you where you bought that from. They just go get one like it. Oh, that's, that's sincere. That's, that's really a form of flattery. But watch that Negro who's envious of you. Because folk who are envious of you are more dangerous than folk who are jealous of you. Because folk who are envious of you don't want what you have. They don't want you to have it. And they will do everything they can to stop you from getting it. But if God be for us. Have I got a witness here? Who can be against us? What God has for you. It is for you and the devil in hell can't stop God from blessing you. You being envious, you being envious of somebody got a car and you walking. How foolish is that? You envious of somebody that God is blessing. And if you get with them, some of that may fall on you. Because you've lived long enough to know. I'm talking to the 730 crowd now. You've lived long enough to know it's not what you know. Oftentimes it's who you know. And if you get with the right people, God will bless you. Instead of you getting envious of folk who graduated from college, get with them and learn how they made it and see how God will bless your life. Love is patient. 
Love is kind. Love is not envious. Joseph was sold in the prison, in the slavery, because his brothers envied him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego wound up in the fiery furnace because of envy. Daniel wound up in the lion's den because of envy. Love, when it is real, is patient and kind. It's not envious. Here it is. It does not parade itself. Uh, it, it does not promote itself. Uh, love does not brag. Uh, love does not draw attention to itself. Love does not make you help somebody and then talk about you had to help somebody. That's, that's drawing attention to yourself. Uh, Jesus said, uh, if you're going to do a good, if you're going to do a kindness, if you're going to give an arm, do it in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Don't, don't do your good deeds to be seen because then they become dead deeds. Don't, don't, don't give a sister a dress and then see her at church and say, my dress sure look good on you. God ain't going to bless that. God will bless her more than he blesses you because you're trying to bring attention to yourself. You're trying to brag on what you did. And if you got to brag on what you did, you already have your reward. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious. Love does not parade itself. Here's another one. Love is not puffed up. Love is not arrogant. It's not proud. No matter how spectacular your gifts, everything you have is a result of divine grace. So really, every last one of us ought to come in here with our head down. With our shoulders stooped. Because we have no reason at all to be puffed up. Uh, I've said it to you, Lily Grove, over and over again. I know I'm repeating myself. I don't have dementia. I'm just trying to make my point. That when you come to church on Sunday morning, check your ego at the door. Leave your self-awareness in the car. Because God is not impressed that you went to U of H. God is not moved at all by how much money you make on your job. You don't impress God by your looks. You don't impress God by your intellect. You don't impress God by your walk. Because all it takes is a moment and God can take it all. And the folk you've been looking down your sanctimonious nose at, thinking they'll never rise to be on your level, God will raise them up to have to help you. Love, when it is real, is long-suffering. It's kind. It's not envious. It does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. Here's another one. It does not behave itself unseemly. Uh, it's not friendly one day and rude the next day. Love, when it is real, is not sometimey. Yeah, some sometimey people go to Fountain of Praise. Is some sometimey people go to Wheeler Avenue? 
Oh God, is some sometimey people at New Faith. I know it's some sometimey people over at Lakewood. Trust me, there are some sometimey people at Lily Grove. One day they speak, one day they don't speak. One day they nice, one day they not nice. One day they compliment you, one day they don't even look at you. One day they sit by you, another day they sitting way over there. But when you're comfortable in who you are and you know whose you are, you don't need any likes on Facebook. Because if nobody likes you, you like yourself. Pat yourself on the back. Take yourself to lunch. Take yourself to the movies. Be glad that God made you yourself. So if you sit by me good, if you don't sit by me, I wasn't born with you. If you like me, wonderful. If you don't like me, I don't live with you. If you're on my side, good. If you're not on my side, I know how to fight for myself. Have I got a witness here? Love, when it is real, does not behave itself unseemly. Here's another one. Love, when it is real, does not seek its own way. It's not selfish. It's not self-centered. Love, when it is real, thinks about others before the self. You, you include others in your selfie. You missed that one. Let me run it by you one more time. You include others in your selfie. When, when, you, when you're taking a picture of yourself, you grab somebody else and say, come get in the picture with me. But I see y'all. I see you. I, I see y'all. You say, move, move, wait, move, uh, uh, move, 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 move. I'm, I'm, let me, let me, uh, 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 I'm, wait, no. I, I, I'm, I'm going to take this one by myself right quick. You can't live in the world by yourself. Have I got a witness here? You need somebody. You, when life turns on you, you're going to need more than yourself. You're going to need some friends. And in order to have friends, you have to show yourself friendly. Love is... It's patient. It's kind. It's not envious. It does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. It does not seek its own way. It is not easily provoked. True love, listen to this, true love keeps no record of evil done to it. Real love keeps no record of evil done to it. When you are a Christian and you truly have the love of God, there is no three strikes and you're out in your vocabulary. Because if God had given us three strikes. Many of us, all of us, would have been out a long time ago. In the scripture, one of the disciples asked Jesus, how many times should we forgive our brother? Seven times? And Jesus said, seven times 70. 
which is an exaggerated number to suggest however many times you need to forgive somebody, that's however many times you need to forgive somebody. Love, when it is true, keeps no record of evil done to it. Real love has a bad memory. It's willing to overlook a slight. It's look, it, it, it looks to forgive an injury. You're not always keeping score. Uh, I, I think uh, sisters, Women's Day, sisters, sisters, Women's Day, uh, Women's Day, sisters, you, you, ought to, you ought to really write this point down. Uh, love is not easily provoked. Uh, because uh, Women's Day, sisters, sisters, Women's Day, you have a, a habit of remembering stuff we forgot. And you get historical in your argument. Not hysterical. Historical. You mad. And we don't even know why. You ain't talking. We just talked this morning. And you get back home and you ain't talking. We were friendly. We had a wonderful conversation. We kissed before we left. And we come back and I just want to, you know, be nice. And I'm washing dishes. Putting stuff away. Cooking, I'm folding clothes. And the first thing you want to know is what you did. I ain't done nothing, girl. Oh, no. you. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. I know you're not washing dishes. You ain't been washing dishes. Am I doing all right, brethren? The man just trying to treat you like a lady. And you come in there singing B.B. King. Want to fight. Easily provoked. Oh, listen to me, beloved. The Christian is only to be angry with that which makes God angry. The Christian is only to be angry with what makes God angry. Misusing somebody makes God angry. Taking advantage of somebody makes God angry. Hurting a child makes God angry. Hurting an elderly person makes God angry. Gossiping and slandering your brothers and sisters, stabbing people in the back makes God angry. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not puffed up, does not parade itself, does not behave in an unseemly manner, does not seek its own way, is not easily provoked. Here is another one. Love does not rejoice in evil. It takes no worthless inventory. It thinks the best of others. And, and brothers and sisters, we would, we would really live a wonderful life if we quit thinking 
the worst of people. Everybody is not out to get you. Listen to me, Lily Grove. Everybody seated next to you is more concerned about their business than yours. They are trying to make ends meet. They are trying to take care of a mother or a father. They are trying to take care of their children. They are trying to keep their house together. They are trying to keep from losing their mind. I promise you that they are not as interested in you as you think they are. Stop, stop, stop rejoicing and, 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 and thinking the worst of people. Stop listening to all this foolish talk you hear on social media. All of this nonsense you hear at the beauty shop and at the barber shop and at the shoe shine shop and at Papa Do's on Friday when everybody's taking a selfie. Stop listening to this nonsense of people telling you how to handle your life and their life is in shambles. Trying to tell you I wouldn't take that from him and they ain't got nobody. A bald-headed man can't tell me nothing about growing hair. Anybody whose life is a mess can't teach me anything but how not to make my life a mess. Let me see if I can make this make sense. Uh, there was an older lady at, at, at the church where I pastored when I was at home in Louisiana, and she would always counsel the younger women uh, whenever they got ready to, got, to get married or they were getting out of high school or they were getting out of college or they were in a relationship, and, and they would go by and talk with Ms. Viola. Ms. Viola lived down the street from us on, on Lewis Street where I was raised, and her advice was always the same and that adv advice that Ms. Viola gave to women back then is still good for women today. She said, believe nothing you hear and half of what you see. Believe nothing that you hear and half of what you see. Because 10 times out of 10, folk who are bringing you evil reports are trying to pull you down to their level and try to bring you to where they are in their misery because misery loves company. But when you have the love of God in your heart, you don't rejoice in evil, but you rejoice with the truth. Oh, that, there's a word here. I'm trying to hurry. Love bears all things. That word bears means covers all things. Oliver Cromwell, in his reign uh, in England, Oliver Cromwell uh, had sentenced a soldier in England's army to death uh, because of some infraction, and he sentenced him to death. The man's fiance came to plead with Sir Oliver Cromwell uh, to have mercy on her fiance. She loved him so much and she wanted to marry him and she asked Sir Oliver to have mercy and Oliver Cromwell said to her, we will not have mercy. He will be executed in the morning at the ringing of the bell. The bell rang uh, to summons the soldiers to come out to get ready uh, for battle, whatever it is they were getting ready to do. And Oliver Cromwell said at the ringing of the bell, uh, this man will be put to death. That night, she climbed inside the bell and held on to the clapper so that when the bell rang the next morning, you couldn't hear it. And you couldn't hear it because she was covering the clapper. And Oliver Cromwell gave the man his freedom because somebody loved him enough to cover the clapper. And love when it is real covers the clapper so that no lie will ring out about you because your sister is covering the clapper. No bad news will get out about you because your brother is covering the clapper. It bears 
all things. It believes all things. Dr. Harry Blake, who's a retired pastor of the Mount Canaan Church in Shreveport, Louisiana, Dr. Blake said his father could not read his own name. Harry went on to Bishop College and uh, went to prestigious universities, got uh, uh, doctor degrees from this place and that one, and uh, his father could not read nor write. But he said his father was one of the wisest men he ever knew. And he said his daddy said he believed everything people told him. He said, Daddy, what do you mean? You believe everything people tell you. His daddy said, I believe it's a lie or it's the truth. Somebody going to get that on the way home. When people tell you who they are, believe them. They're not lying to you. If they're evil, stay away from them. If they don't mean you're any good, in the language of my grandmother, feed them with a long-handled spoon. Love endures all things. Love hopes all things. Love never fails. Now, all, of that, all that I have just mentioned in this little sermon about love being patient and kind and not puffed up and not behaving itself unseemly, not seeking its own way, not easily provoked. Love, not rejoicing in iniquity, but rejoicing in the truth. Bears all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That kind of love is exemplified and personified in Jesus Christ. Jesus came. And I'm glad he came. He came not for a righteous person, but he came for sinners like you and I. And he came to demonstrate God's love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The resurrection is the greatest example of the power of God. But the crucifixion is the greatest example of the love of God. Because brothers and sisters, you and I can break God's heart, but we can never break God's love. His love for us is unbreakable. His love for us is unyielding. His love for us is unending. His love for us is everlasting. His love for us was proven one Friday when he sent Jesus to die for our sins. Now if the love of God cannot move you, if you cannot be inspired by a God who loves you so, you will never be able to get what we call happy in church. Because if God's love does not inspire you, if God's love does not move you almost to weeping, you will never know what it is to be excited in the worship. Because those of us who have experienced the love of God know that when we were unlovable, when we were down and out, when we were not even worthy of the name Christian, God still loved us. When everybody was looking down on us, and we were even looking down on ourselves, God still loved us. Have I got a witness here? Thank God that he loves the backslider. Because I have backslidden so many times, and God has come to my rescue. Praise God, he's in love with the drug addict. God is in love with the homosexual. God is in love with the adulterer. God is in love with somebody who's been divorced. God still loves you even though you've had an abortion. God still loves you even though your life is going down the drain. God still loves you even when people don't think well of you. God still cares about you when life turns on you. 
when the world seems cold and your friends seem few there is someone who cares for you he'll come down from the skies wipe the tears from your eyes you're his child and God cares for you I'm glad this morning that I have a God who loves me you don't have to love me God loves me you don't have to speak to me I got a God I can talk with every morning you don't have to sit with me he walks with me he talks with me he tells me I am his own I need a witness here this morning who can help me to testify I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore very deeply staying within I was sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry from the waters he lifted me oh safe safe am I love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me have I got a witness is there anybody here know who I'm talking about if the Lord opened doors for you Come on, help me praise him. If the Lord showed favor towards you, help me give him the glory. If the Lord dried your tears, help me tell him thank you. Put food on your table, clothes on your back, watch you all night, woke you up this morning, tell him thank you for all you've done. Thank you for the many doors you've opened. If you need a doctor, God is a doctor. If you need a lawyer, God is a lawyer. If you need a friend, God is a friend. Why don't you encourage somebody? Why don't you reach out to somebody? Why don't you hug your neighbor? Tell them whatever you're going through come on use your preaching voice whatever your problem is be not dismayed whatever be tired God will yes he will yes he will yes he will do you know he will Say yes, 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 he will. I know you are. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me behold what manner of love hath the father for us that now are we called sons of God and it does not appear what we shall be but we know that when he comes we shall be like him 
for we shall see him as he is. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the hearts of men the good things that God has in store for them that love him.